and if, some 22 springs later, Navy Captain 2nd rank Boris Berkovsky, wearing a white tunic and a trace of expensive eau de cologne, was buying a cake for a young lady, do not take an oath that the cake would ever reach the young lady and not be sliced up instead by the knives of the men searching the captain and then delivered to him in his first cell. No, one certainly cannot say that daylight arrest, arrest during a journey, or arrest in the middle of a crowd has ever been neglected in our country. However, it has always been clean cut and, most sir, Rising of all, the victims, in cooperation with the security men, have conducted themselves in the noblest conceivable manner, so as to spare the living from witnessing the death of the condemned. Not everyone can be arrested at home, with a preliminary knock at the door, and if there is a knock, then it has to be the house manager or else the postman. And not everyone can be arrested at work either. If the person to be arrested is vicious, then it's better to seize him outside his ordinary milieu away from his family and colleagues, from those who share his views, from any hiding places. It is essential that he have no chance to destroy, hide, or pass on anything to anyone. VIPs in the military are the party were sometimes first given, new assignments, ensconced in a private railway car, and then arrested en route. Some. Arrest I-9. Obscure, ordinary mortal, scared to death by epidemic arrests all around him and already depressed for a week by sinister glances from his chief, is suddenly summoned to the local party committee where he is beamingly presented with a vacation ticket to a Sochi sanatorium. The rabbit is overwhelmed and immediately concludes that his fears were groundless. After expressing his gratitude, he hurries home, triumphant, to pack his suitcase. It is only two hours till train time, and he scolds his wife for being too slow. He arrives at the station with time to spare, and there in the waiting room or at the bar he is hailed by an extraordinarily pleasant young man. Don't you remember me, Pyotr Ivanik? Pyotr Ivanik has difficulty remembering. Well, not exactly, you see, although the young man, however, is overflowing with friendly concern. Come now. How can that be? I'll have to remind you. And he bows respectfully to Pyotr Ivanich's wife. You must forgive us. I'll keep him only one minute. The wife exceeds, and trustingly the husband lets himself be led away by the arm forever or for ten years. The station is thronged and no one notices anything. Oh, you citizens who love to travel. Do not forget that in every station there are a GPU branch and several prison cells. This importunity of alleged acquaintances is so abrupt that only a person who has not had the wolfish preparation of camp life is likely to pull back from it. Do not suppose, for example, that if you are an employee of the American Embassy by the name of Alexander D. you cannot be arrested in broad daylight on Gorky Street, right by the Central Telegraph Office. Your unfamiliar friend dashes through the press of the crowd, and opens his plundering arms to embrace you, Sasha. He simply shouts at you, with no effort to be inconspicuous. Pal, long time no see. Come on over, let's get out of the way. At that moment a Pobeta sedan draws up to the curb. And several days later TASS will issue an angry statement to all the papers alleging that informed circles of the Soviet government have no information on the disappearance of Alexander D. But what's so unusual about that? 
Our boys have carried out such arrests in Brussels which was where Zora Blednov was seized not just in Moscow. One has to give the organs their due. In an age when public. Ten I the Gulag Archipelago. Speeches, the plays in our theaters, and women's fashions all seem to have come off assembly lines. Arrests can be of the most varied kind. They take you aside in a factory corridor after you have had your pass checked and you're arrested. They take you from a military hospital with a temperature of 102, as they did with Anne's bench time, and the doctor will not raise a peep about your arrest just let him try. They'll take you right off the operating table as they took Anne. M. Borobayev, a school inspector, in 1936, in the middle of an operation for stomach ulcer and drag you off to a cell, as they did him, half alive and all bloody as Karpunik recollects. Or, like Nadia Levitskaya, you try to get information about your mother's sentence, and they give it to you, but it turns out to be a confrontation in your own arrest. In the gastronome the fancy food store you are invited to the special order department and arrested there. You are arrested by a religious pilgrim whom you have put up for the night, for the sake of Christ. You are arrested by a meter man who has come to read your electric meter. You are arrested by a bicyclist who has run into you on the street, by a railway conductor, a taxi driver, a savings bank teller, the manager of a movie theater. Any one of them can arrest you and you notice the concealed maroon-colored identification card only when it is too late. Sometimes arrests even seem to be a game there is so much superfluous imagination, so much well-fed energy, invested in them. After all, the victim would not resist anyway. Is it that the security agents want to justify their employment and their numbers? After all, it would seem enough to send notices to all the rabbits marked for arrest, and they would show up obediently at the designated hour and minute at the iron gates of state security with a bundle in their hands ready to occupy a piece of floor in the cell for which they were intended. And, in fact, that's the way collective farmers are arrested. Who wants to go all the way to a hut at night? with no roads to travel on. They are summoned to the village Soviet and arrested there. Manual workers are called into the office. Of course, every machine has a point at which it is overloaded, beyond which it cannot function. In the strained and overloaded years of 1945 and 1946, when trainload after trainload poured in from Europe, to be swallowed up immediately and sent off to arrest I-11 Gulag. All that excessive theatricality went out the window, and the whole theory suffered greatly. All the fuss and feathers of ritual went flying in every direction, and the arrest of tens of thousands took on the appearance of a squalid roll call. They stood there with lists, read off the names of those on one train, loaded them onto another, and that was the whole arrest. For several decades political arrests were distinguished in our country precisely by the fact that people were arrested who were guilty of nothing and were therefore unprepared to put up any resistance whatsoever. There was a general feeling of being destined for destruction, a sense of having nowhere to escape from the GPUNKBD, which, incidentally, given our internal passport system, was quite accurate. And even in the fever of epidemic arrests, when people leaving for work said farewell to their families every day, because they could not be certain they would return at night, even then almost no one tried to run away and only in rare cases did people commit suicide. And that was exactly what was required.
A submissive sheep is a find for a wolf. This submissiveness was also due to ignorance of the mechanics of epidemic arrests. By and large, the organs had no profound reasons for their choice of whom to arrest and whom not to arrest. They merely had overall assignments, quotas for a specific number of arrests. These quotas might be filled on an orderly basis or wholly arbitrarily. In 1937 a woman came to the reception room of the Novakurkask NKVD to ask what she should do about the unfed unweaned infant of a neighbor who had been arrested. They said, sit down, we'll find out. She sat there for two hours whereupon they took her and tossed her into a cell. They had a total plan which had to be fulfilled in a hurry and there was no one available to send out into the city. And here was this woman already in their hands. On the other hand, the NKVD did come to get the Latvian Andre Pavel near Orsha. But he didn't open the door. He jumped out the window, escaped, and shot straight to Siberia. And even though he lived under his own name, and it was clear from his documents that he had come from Orsha, he was never arrested, nor summoned to the organs, nor subjected to any suspicion whatsoever. After all, search for wanted persons falls into three categories, all union, republican, and provincial. And the pure. 12. I. The Gulag Archipelago. Suit of nearly half of those arrested in those epidemics would have been confined to the provinces. A person marked for arrest by virtue of chance circumstances, such as a neighbor's denunciation, could be easily replaced by another neighbor. Others, like Andre Pavel, who found themselves in a trap or an ambushed apartment by accident, and who were bold enough to escape immediately, before they could be questioned, were never caught and never charged, while those who stayed behind to await justice got a term in prison. And the overwhelming majority almost all behaved just like that, without any spirit, helplessly, with a sense of doom. It is true, of course, that the NKVD, in the absence of the person it wanted, would make his relatives guarantee not to leave the area. And, of course, it was easy enough to cook up a case against those who stayed behind to replace the one who had fled. Universal innocence also gave rise to the universal failure to act. Maybe they won't take you. Maybe it will all blow over. A. I. Lady Junsky was the chief teacher in a school in remote Kalagrid. In 1937 a peasant approached him in an open market and passed him a message from a third person, Alexander Ivanik, get out of town, you are on the list. But he stayed. After all, the whole school rests on my shoulders, and their own children are pupils here. How can they arrest me? Several days later he was arrested. Not everyone was so fortunate as to understand at the age of 14, as did Vanya Levitsky, every honest man is sure to go to prison. Right now my papa is serving time, and when I grow up they'll put me in too. They put him in when he was 23 years old. The majority sit quietly and dare to hope. Since you aren't guilty, then how can they arrest you? It's a mistake. They are already dragging you along by the collar, and you still keep on exclaiming to yourself, it's a mistake. They'll set things straight and let me out. Others are being arrested en masse, and that's a bothersome fact, but in those other cases there is always some dark area. Maybe he was guilty. But as for you, you are obviously innocent. You still believe TLTAT the organs are humanly logical institutions. 
They will set things straight and let you out. Why?